Welcome to Watch Symposium. I'm Austin, and we're looking at Marcello's sermon, or as he likes to call it, his Starbucks. Starbucks. All right. And look at the way the light is hitting it. I mean, that's very interesting. And the bezel looks matte green. It looks very light, and I'm sure it's going to change once I put my hands into the picture and it gets a little bit darker, and you know, the, the exposure on the photograph kind of darkens it up a bit and um, this is a really good looking watch and and I was saying to Marcelo that you know I think when you don't have this watch and you do have this watch when you don't own this watch and you do own this watch your perception changes and for me mm. I'm, I'm I don't want to say I'm underwhelmed but if I own this watch I think I would see a lot of beauty in it and I would I would very likely become um a uh, a real fan of, of of this, and especially since this is, in, in my opinion, maybe one of the last um, green Submariners. And and if you think of a a bell curve, you know, we started out with the one six six one zero LV, right? It started kind of going up like there, and then and then and then the uh, as far as the green goes, this is a bell curve of green. The Hulk, whoa, it got really green. Okay. And then, uh, and then, you know, maybe we had our fill or Rolex said, uh, you had your fill, damn it. And now we're back to a little less green and I think we're gonna taper off to nothing in the future. And, uh, and perhaps this is sort of the last of the green watches or not. You know, I'm not sure, it's a, it's a great question. Um, on a related note, this peak right here of greenness, too much, too little, hell of a lot of green i mean i gotta say and i'm not a fan of the hulk i think it's a garish green watch and um and i think i think if you're looking at because they don't have a cd effect that's what what's that it look like a cd effect the dial yeah well it's got white gold in it and it's a very amazing uh watch okay uh but aesthetically i think it's a little bit too much and i'm talking about the hulk right now all right i think it's just too green, too garish, and if you look at the aesthetics of a watch, I think it's just too much. But Marcelo is pointing out something very interesting. It's not just about the aesthetics of a watch. Um, that's the way I look at it. That's the way I frame it. That's what's important to me. But it's the hype and it's the the um, f off factor. And there ain't nothing more in your face and look what I have than a garish green watch. And so. I sort of understand the, the greenness of the Hulk. And uh, we come to this, and I think this is more low-key. This is my kind of thing. Of course, I'm, I'm more of a, a five-digit guy, the 16610LV with the aluminum bezel insert, which can look lime green or, or different shades of green, depending on what you get. And you've got the fat four if you're very lucky. It, it, it's it's beautiful and and there's a texture that I don't think the ceramics really um, well they don't pull off and and I don't know if Rolex is working on it or if they feel they have achieved what they need to achieve with these ceramic inserts but but I think the iridescent texture and play of light of the pre ceramics is is pretty amazing that said. This is a little thicker. I like the more thin uh, width of the pre-ceramics. Again, if this was a Pepsi or a, a, a you know a Coke, we'd we'd be seeing a little bit more of the play of light I'm talking about, especially if it was faded. But um, this is a little bit thicker. It's shinier, but at the same time, it's got kind of a matte look. You know, it's almost like the outside is shiny, but the interior is matte. And uh, it, it's a whole different aesthetic. It's, it's fancier, it's not gonna scratch, and somebody could wear this for years and it's not gonna look all scratched up. Again, if you like a scratch watch and you like a little bit of wear on your watch, uh, that could be a bad thing, or, or if you don't, it could be a good thing. And, you know, this, there's just a lot of modernity in this look. And, and uh, you know, I think, I think they're both good. I, I, that's what I got to say. They're both good. They're different. I don't want to say that the Kermit is better than the Sermit or the Sermit is better than the Kermit. I mean, you know, 
uh, as far as the way the watch performs and the movement, I guess you'd have to give it to this, possibly, right? How, how accurate is this? Mm, this goes uh, to uh, maybe one sec one second uh, a week or something. Like okay, very, that, very, that's very amazing. Yeah. That's but, amazing. But uh, Austin, I would ask a question, especially when we're talking about how we say the Cermic and the Kermit. Mm -hmm. um, if I have a Kermit, a original Kermit, um, even even if the basil uh, did the faded because it was aluminum basil, we timed that something that I actually do like, um, and I, then I send the watch to to service. I guess they would uh, change the basil and and uh, make the watch like brand new. So then I would lose all this. No, kind they of they factor. they would ask you, and you'd have to be insane to agree to it. Um, they, would, they would ask you. This is because some people don't know and they might actually accept the new, uh, the new Basil. I guess if somebody has a Kermit and they don't know what they have, but it, it would have to be a downright evil AD. And I, and I mean that. I mean, it would be have, have to be a person working at the AD that, that knows that they're going to devalue the watch and that they know that they're going to do this customer wrong, but they, 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 they say, oh, you know, we can get a nice new bezel on and could uh, they get you know, a boat um well here in japan you 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 can uh you got to pay 40 uh percent uh for the older bezel insert but i don't know if they would let you double up and that's the big question i mean if you're going from coke to pepsi you pay 40 percent to get back mm -hmm. that uh that coke but if you're going from green to green i don't know if they'd say yeah, we can't do that. We can't let you double up. I mean, that would be awesome if they would, because you could absolutely two, two bezels. Absolutely, and if you and if you had a Kermit and it was a fat four Kermit, then during a service, probably what I would do, if it was a daily wear for me, I would I would have the bezel insert changed and I would have a regular uh, Kermit put in. I would take the fat four Kermit out and store that. That way, I wouldn't. Uh, heard it because when it comes to the Kermits, I mean, it's all about that aluminum bezel. And it's almost like, you know, it, it, it's just so much riding on that little tiny, tiny piece of aluminum. I mean, we're talking about, you know, a four that if it's fat, it's $10,000 more <laughs> than if it's not fat. I mean, that's, that's insane. And so I would want to um, I would want to protect that if it was a daily wear, but you know, it probably wouldn't be a daily wear because, um, you know, it's a Kermit, right? So anyway, guys, we're looking at this and uh, 120 clicks, very nice. Any rollback? No. And, and I'm being very gentle because again, if I start wrenching it back, well, I'm gonna give uh, this watch rollback. Still, still under warranty. <laughs> still under warranty, well, <laughs> let's just keep it nice. How about this, right? <laughs> Now, let's take a look and see if they got the rehot right. Uh, they got it close, close but no cigar. Rolex has like a real issue with this that. This is actually awesome that you mentioned me before. You know, I should take care about the rehot. I never thought about that. It's to the right. I mean, it's not a big deal, but it, come on, Rolex, guys, really, it's, uh, is it that hard? But by the way, Austin, does uh, alignment in the wee heart affect the value of the watch? Well, I had a friend that uh, he passed up on a Submariner because he went to see it and it it didn't have a aligned re -hot. But I think it depends on the deal. Like if you're looking at a few mm. watches, you know, you go for the one with a aligned re -hot. But if you got a great deal, then this is something that can be, you know, fixed after the fact and, and during a service. But it's one of those trifling things that Rolex just mm. can't seem to to get right so all right well so if i want to increase the value of my watches i should confirm in the service that they actually make that well i don't think most people are really going to think about that probably just that guy i mentioned and me so <laughs> we're the only two maybe one other guy out there um it's one of those things it's just like i said it's a trifling thing that people mm. really probably don't think about but us uh particular folk we uh, we do think about that, and again, how hard is it, Rolex? Come on. Anyway, this is a beautiful watch. Move the crown. Move the crown. Oh yeah, yeah. How could I forget? 
and I want you to tell me what you think when you change the times and the, maybe maybe I do the same like you show me with the Smurf, like go back. Very and tight, like, feels very good. I mean, you just tell it's so waterproof. It is just so resistant to, to any kind of liquid or uh, dust. This watch is three months old. <laughs> so again, you, you pull it back like that and, and when I go forward, it's gonna pop out, but I go really slowly and, and I don't go fast because mm. You again, you can strip some some threads. All right, so let's feel it. Oh, wow! And you can hear it. You know, it's different. All watches have a different wind, and the and the other three mm. Rolex watches that I saw today and that I handled today, they had a different wind and, and a unique wind. And this is it's it's almost like they're equally good but different. It's almost like a beautiful woman with like red hair and another beautiful woman with like green eyes or I was gonna say green hair but it's kind of weird but black hair and blonde hair it's like it's like they're all beautiful but they, they're, they're just different and you almost can't even choose and this has oh it's got it's got such a good feeling to it and you can kind of hear it and it's almost as it is it as it turns you the vibrations from from the gears just kind of resonate through the the crown and you kind of kind of feel that feels very good. So you want me to hack it? Mm. All right. So. Yeah. Ah, I, shit. It feels like. Uh, ah, man. I so much struggle with this. The same thing like I did uh-huh. with the Smurf. And you do it so smoothly. Yes. And ah, well, man. this will be the third time I think we bring ah, it up. But. Man. but I'm so uh, surprised. Okay, cool. Well, well, here's the thing. He's He's been winding it. And then he's tried to hack it. If I try to hack it right now, let's try it. <laughs> I'm pulling like crazy. I mean, you'll wrench this thing out. It's not going to so work. So in theory, somebody even can break this without even I don't even know. Knowing, I, right? I, 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 I suppose. I'm not sure. But, but the way you do Rolexes and you just go back a bit. And then after that, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. And, and Marco, Marcelo is, he is, he's just, he's beside himself because I think this is sort of one of those revelations that, you know, Link in the description, guys, because I, I have a, a video about this, and I, and, and I think it's entitled, Hey, I just learned how to set a Rolex watch today. And, and that's the key, right? Rolex watches are really particular. You know, when you, um, when you set them and, and uh, pull out the crown and you, and you, 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 you set them and when you, when you push in the crown, how it moves and about how to mitigate it moving too much. I mean, there's a whole method behind it that I've sort of uh, developed personally and I've never really gone into it in, into any of the videos I've made but anyway let's uh, let's just wind this down and oh man that is tight and you could just feel it it's all up against rubber oh man that feels so good that feels so good and then what do we have oh alright it's, it's I always have a soft spot for for crowns that are pointing up um watch uh well, what? This, this crown is also not perfect you're going to see sometimes the up sometimes it's down i mean yeah it's, oh really this changes sometimes it's down yes yeah, okay yeah, yeah, so that's yeah. interesting i guess the modern watches there's a couple ways to thread it so it's not like it's a a twin lock versus a trip lock thing it's it's uh the newer watches i guess versus the five digits where the five digits they always screw down I kept saying wind down. I meant screw down in the same way. According to Marcelo, mm. it yes. depends. It, they they go down in different ways. And so that's interesting. I, and, and so I guess you're... You know, later you're going to uh, talk about this. This one always go down. Oh, okay. Well, they they, they go. always go down. Always well, uh, the crown is Well, there you position. go. This is an older watch. Always this position. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. It's an older watch. That's why. So it must be a, a, something different between the older watches and the newer watches. The five digit and before, they always screw down into the same position. The newer watches... Is random. Is random. It's, it's, yeah. There's probably two or three places where it winds up. You know what I mean? Mm. You're going to do an experiment? Okay, this one is to the... Now, this one is take to, it out, is, uh, wind a little bit, right, and right. Uh, put it back, you're going to see different... Exactly. Things. This is at the 2 o'clock, okay? So okay. try to go backwards and a little bit... Uh, this is the way I do. Wait, do you press it down and go backwards? No. Uh, yeah. Uh, you hold it, 
always I do like this. I go backwards a little bit and uh -huh. then uh, f ah, uh, front. And then, okay. and then you lock it. All right, let me try that. Okay, so first of all, I got to do it to here. Okay, so. You press backwards and then you can uh, go forwards and then you lock it. That's interesting. I think that might be a good technique. I might start doing that. That maybe, makes maybe, sense. Maybe this is with the modern watches. I don't know about the previous ones, but. Yeah, this is always six, at 2 o'clock. Yeah. Anyway, all right, beautiful watch, and I like the black dial and just enough green to make it kind of fun versus like an all black Submariner, but not too much green like the Hulk, in my opinion. So what do you guys think of the Sermit? Beautiful watch, and I think they corrected these lugs. I think this is really, really nice. In fact, I tell you what, we've got a 40 millimeter watch on my wrist, so let's just sort of do a little bit of a comparison uh, really quickly. and. Interesting. I mean, it's almost like this looks, in a way, almost smaller because the the dial looks smaller because the the insert is is thicker. Uh, it's almost like there's more dial space on this one. Interesting. All right, but you know, you really can't tell that one is what is this forty two or forty one. <laughs> Is this supposed to be 41 or 42? 41, uh, for, right? uh, 40 41. And a half. <laughs> okay, whatever it is. But, but uh, yeah, they were considered. But you can really see it in the lugs. Check out those lugs. Mm. Yeah. And so it looks like you could polish quite a bit and years, years, years later start looking like this. But this is the thing. I'm never going to polish them. Yeah. This Guys, my, uh, let me know what you think. Take care. A couple beautiful watches here. What do you think of the. Sermit, very nice watch, and uh, thanks for watching. Take care. See you next time.